I'm just going to ask you, Peter, what you said a few minutes ago in the office about when you changed from being a butcher to buying a trailblazer. Um, when I had the butcher shop, I, w I had suffered a lot from sciatica, back pain and, and stress and of the day-to-day -day running and stuff of the business. And seriously, the day I bought the trailblazer changed my life. Mm -hmm. As in a better lifestyle, everything about it totally, totally changed my life. I have no, I don't have no back pain. I have nothing like that now. I, I just, it's, it's a pleasure to do what I do now. Mm. For me, it's a mm. pleasure to do it. Mm. It totally, totally changed my life. Well, hi everybody. Welcome back to Your Story Is Our Story. Um, if you've been watching some of the previous ones, uh, you'll have seen a fantastic variety of, of what type of people use our machines and how they, how they feel about them. This is an interesting character. This guy's called Peter Fair. Again, why were we interviewing him? Because he's got an interesting story, but he's also a long customer. He is one of our first machines that he bought off us about eight and a half years ago. Um, and I can actually remember selling the machine to him, and that's quite something, because we've done hundreds and hundreds of sales. But Peter Fair runs a business with this trailblazer, and interestingly, his name is, of the name of his business is called Fair Grills. Now that's pretty smart. So that tells you a wee bit about how cute this guy is. Um, and uh, what we want today to do is to, I want to chat to Peter, I want to ask him questions so you get some really interesting feedback and maybe a few tips about what, may, what works and what doesn't work. So sit back, get yourself a cup of tea, put it on hold and settle down and listen to what Peter has to say. So I'm going to start off by saying, Peter, tell me what your background was. Um, a retail butcher for 20 odd years. Uh, Pretty tough game to be in, but um, yeah, we I had a retail butcher shop in Cash, County Fermanagh, for 20 years and uh, took an ocean one day and sold up. Mm -hmm. And didn't know, didn't know what I was going to do next. And So that's interesting. So Peter is a butcher by, by trade, because we've sold machines to a lot of butchers. And one of the things, I'm sure they're not all the same, but one of the things we notice is how well a butcher looks after their machines. And we have a video of Peter Butcher, which we're going to play now as we talk over this for, for a wee minute, um, to show you what a machine at eight and a half years old, uh, how it looks. It looks as if he hasn't been using it properly. Um, and I tell you, I don't know how many hundreds of uses, Peter, or maybe more, uh, you know, I mean, how many uses have you used that machine for? Oh, <clears throat> probably, I, I don't know. I couldn't even begin to think. The, the trucks of our business is mostly house party, uh, christenings, first communions, weddings, after weddings, anything that people want to have. We pretty much rock up to their houses. And so what would be a busy week? How many events would you in a well, busy we, week? We, would, we, we could do anything from three to four a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some weeks you might only do one, but other weeks mm -hmm. you could do yeah. three or four anyway, yeah. in a week. Yeah. Um, it, it definitely, um, I, I, I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's not hard work, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. So when you decided to buy a trailblazer after your butchery business, yeah. tell me, how did that change your life, your work ethos? How do you compare it being outdoor catering with a trailblazer to running a butcher shop? Well, running a butcher shop was 24 seven, six, seven days a week. You're always going, people are ringing even on a Sunday, look, can you do X, Y, and Z? From doing that to now going out once a week, twice a week, three times a week, it's easy now for me. I find this very easy. If I was 25 today, I'd have three, four of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No problem whatsoever. You, you, for somebody young, 
it definitely would be somebody young with a bit of um, get up and go on them mm -hmm. and w want a bit of time off. For example, like we can finish on a Sunday evening and we might do it the following Thursday. Mm -hmm. And make a comfortable living. Uh, and yeah, we, without a doubt, you can make a comfortable living. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're not going to be millionaires, but sure, hey ho, mm -hmm. it's not about always being no. a millionaire. It's about enjoying your time at what you're doing. And if you enjoy what you're doing, it's not hard. I suppose that's why our wee slogan, which is customer driven slogan, which is work less hours, make more money, yeah. have more fun. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think realistically, what we're passionate about from a product development point of view. So many people say to me, Peter, Lester, why don't you run an outdoor catering business cheaper? like, you know, look at the business you have, you know. I'm saying, it's not my game. Yeah. yeah. And because what you guys tell me, uh, tell Lex and I regularly on the phone is how transformational buying one of our machines is to, to their lifestyle, not just to their bottom, to their pockets, yeah. but to actually the quality of life. And I have to say, that's one of the most encouraging things that we feel we get back from a feedback point of view. So from all our products that we develop, and we're constantly developing products and getting, making them better. But really, one of the things that we've seen more, especially lately, is that people are looking for a higher quality of life. Yeah. How has that affected you from a quality of life well, point of view? Well, you, I, I, I would have more time off now like if I don't want, for example, if I don't want to do it for the next fortnight, I just say, right, I block out the next fortnight and I just don't do anything. I just mm -hmm. just say, right, okay, we're going to go on holidays or we're going to do whatever we're going to do. We have work to do. We, don't, we just block it out. We don't take, we, we, we would, you know, it's not work for me. I, I find it not work. It, it's, yes, it's a job, um, but it's, I, enjoy, I really enjoy it now. I, I don't find it hard. I love the day-to-day -day speaking to the customers, mm -hmm. going to the parties and having the banter and a bit of crack. And y You don't get that in retail. Like. Mm -hmm. you don't, you, yes, you have banter, don't get me wrong, but you don't get that kind of, you know, the client gets to like you as much as you like the client. But the, also on that, when, you go, when we go to do a party, it's like where we want somebody to come to our house to do a party. So we like it done right. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, we go to your house to do a party for you and we do it the way we would want it done at our house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, people like that. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. where we, we're getting, we're constantly getting people coming back. Look, you done a party for eight months ago, two, 18 months ago. Can you come back and do... We Johnny's just after having a, a, a baby, you know, can we can you come and do the christening? That's like I, I I can't describe what that's like where people are wanting to wanting you to come back to do when they see what you've already done. Yeah, they want yeah. you to go back to their house again. Absolutely. Plus we don't make a mess when we go there. When we when we go we leave it the way we find it. But the thing that's obvious to me, <coughs> Peter, having spoken to you many times, is that you do take your business very seriously. Yeah. You do deliver quite a lot of passion. Yeah. in what you do and you are, you know, your, your attention to detail and I mean, your machine is just it's a compliment to you. If you look at some of the dynamics of what turns a customer on or turns a customer off, what have you learned from a hints and tips point of view of saying, what is it that customers notice? What is it that causes customers to come back to you? And what are the things you see in the industry that does people damage? Well, I see one thing that the customer draws the customer back to us when we arrive on, on, on to a venue and the customer actually sees that the food that's going to be cooked is raw first and foremost mm -hmm. it hasn't been pre-cooked mm -hmm. there's none of that mm -hmm. so they they realize oh so, sometimes you go and they think oh he's going to take out pre-cooked chicken or he's mm -hmm. going to do this but, mm -hmm. but when they see it raw they go they realize that oh this so this has been cooked from raw so mm -hmm. it's you know it, they like that the cust the punter likes that the other thing that Going back to what you were saying about the, about the way of the thing, I have five stars on the doors from environmental health, and that means a lot mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. That means a lot mm -hmm. to me. So we pull up, and so many times we have seen them pointing at the thing on the back of the thing because they're five stars. Mm -hmm. But when they see you operate and they know the way you walk and the stuff like that there, yeah. I think it's something that we were chatting about earlier on, Peter. <clears throat> it's something that I think is a bigger deal than most people realise in the catering industry is hygiene. Um, major, Dean, you know, major, people, major, major. People, you lose a customer faster than you win a new customer 
based on your attitude towards hygiene. Because if you're if you're say if you're at a food outlet and you see somebody making your food and rubbing their nose or yeah. doing putting their hand in their pocket or you know scratching themselves, you just don't go back. Well, we, when we when when we go to a, a venue to do a party, for example, the people can see you doing the, the, from scratch. It's open cooking. It's, it's just, open yeah. cooking. It's like yeah. it's just like you're you've brought your kitchen to their yard. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, no, there's nothing hidden. Like. There's nothing hidden. But also, I think, you know, I think you, you've said to me before, it's actually the theatre as well. So you've got... Oh, they love it. People know that your hygiene is, is, is high, yeah. which means they trust your, your food. But they also love the theatre. There's big gullwing doors and the cooking being from raw. And the charcoal. And, and the entertainment and the charcoal and the authentic cooking. So, so th there's a lot of... And I've you know, visited on numerous customers and you just feel this buzz about the place yeah, yeah. That, that comes. It's like theatre, all right. It is yeah. like theatre. And that the, the amount of people that come and they think it's ga a gas barbecue you have and then all of a sudden you take out a bag of charcoal and you load it onto the machine and you light it up and yeah. they're going, oh, it's, it's charcoal. Uh -huh. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> so already they've got the, the, they're getting the flavour of the charcoal before they've even eaten it, you Absolutely. know what I mean? We have a fantastic photograph, uh, Peter, of another customer, of another customer who owns a, a 600S, and uh, he has a photograph of his trailblazer sitting beside a chip van, right. and there's a dog leg cue to his trailblazer. to his trailblazer, and the guy in the serving in the chip van is standing with two hands looking at the queue without a single customer. That's right. Because people are saying chip van authentic gourmet burgers yes. or whatever. And it was so profound to see that photograph. It was, it was quite incredible. And a lot of people say, is it, you know, do we buy one, do we not? Do they're whatever the price our machines are. Do we take a risk, do we not, not take a risk? And we're constantly saying to people, if you only could hear the stories we're hearing. Yeah, yeah. So, but it isn't just a walk in the park. It's hard it's work not, as yeah, well. It's, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, I think I don't want to make people feel that this is just the instant way to being a millionaire because like any job to do well, you've got to work hard at it, which well, you do. do. Yeah, they do. Um, but what, what sort of tips would you give to anybody who's thinking about going into outdoor catering generally or, going, or thinking about buying a trailblazer? The, the, well, first and foremost, it's, it's, not a, it's just um, you need to be, you've got to be driven. You've got to be. Um, you've got to enjoy what you're doing, yeah. but also on the trail blazer thing, it's just a different. It's just a different way. This every corner you go around is a chip fan. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to mm -hmm. chip fans, mm -hmm. but you know, you're not going to walk around a corner and see a trail. Well, there's a lot of them about. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but yeah. if. Because I like the trail blazer and what a dropper. I, I'm going to queue up at the trail blazer Absolutely. before I'm going to queue up at, queue up at the chip Absolutely. fan. Absolutely. But yeah. Um, yeah, going back to what you were saying, yeah, uh, yeah, driven is a big thing, and and getting the market what people want to, you know, um, what way would I put that? Say, for example, uh, you also need to have quality food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I work with a butcher that used to work for me and I know the, the, the quality of his product. And it's, yes, it's, it's a bit more expensive, but quality definitely works all the time, without a doubt. You've got to be driven, you've got to buy a quality product, and you've, you need good charcoal too also. And if you've got them three things and the machine and the setup right, you, you'll... The world's your oyster. Yeah, like. yeah. yeah. And I think you can cook anything on them machines. Like. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just about burgers, like yeah. you can you can cook fish, you name it. Doesn't matter what it is, you can cook anything on those machines. They're not just a burger machine, like they're they're. You can cook a full meal on the machine, like. Well, it was interesting because I got a phone call a few years ago of a guy saying, "Lester, are you, uh, did you just watch Come Dine with Me?" And I said, "No, he says there's a trailblazer on it." Oh, you and, and the guy, one of our customers, bought a trailblazer off us, and he cooked starters, main course, and dessert on his trailblazer. I can tell you, the guy that bought that trailblazer <laughs> saw my trailblazer in Anniskillen. Is that right? Is he, that... he had a coffee van. Wow. I know the boy. He, 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 and he went and bought, a th he bought the trailblazer. There you go. Mine. <laughs> That's brilliant. 
But that was just, I think he did chocolate brownies on stuff like that. I said charcoal barbecue the yeah, other day. Right. But you're right, I think it is amazing what people could do on it. We're getting all kinds of different uh, cultural foods being done on yes. it. And somebody does smoked deals and somebody else does African food. And, and it's, it's, it's very exciting. And it, to, to be honest with you, it drives us. Because we, when we hear the story, we just love listening to them and we realise how versatile the pieces of kit are. But look, hopefully you've enjoyed listening. I really hope that you've picked up some wee hints and tips. If you're wavering as to whether you shoot or not, I think what Peter's saying is, and what we feel people are saying is, it's not a big risk. And it's likely to be a big reward because the basic standard machine is a very powerful tool. It's never actually going to deliver the end results for you. You've got to have the energy. You've got to have the enthusiasm, passion. But if you have that, this machine is going to serve you well. And I think one of the things that we want to continue to do is develop and develop and develop so that your needs are continually delivered uh, for you to give you quality of life, more fun, and a better, better standard of living. So Peter, thanks for your time. Very inspirational. Um, you've been at the game for a while. We will, yeah. we'll, don't we both wish we were 30 again? I know and, we do. Uh, <laughs> we do indeed. Uh, I wish you every success in the thanks future. Thanks very much. And guys, thanks for listening. Come back and see the next one. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.